Hi there, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another project video. And this time I've got one of those little projects that um, were suggestions from you when I presented the capacitor leakage tester that became one of the modules that goes above my bench below the shelf. And this one, which as you can see, arrived from PCBWay, the boards, I've already opened them. And as usual, they did a great job. Let's see if I have, because I've been known to make mistakes on my boards. Boards are perfect. We'll see if the connections that I've designed are as well. Now, what is this? This is a decade resistor box, and it's a very cheap version of a decade resistor box. Now, when I say cheap version, the resistors I'm using are very good quality resistors. All these resistors are one watt. So my entire board or the entire switching will be able to handle up to one watt or more, actually more. But the point is I wanted to make this quite cheap. And uh, the reason for that is if you know how much rotary switches cost, the good ones, the ones with very low contact resistance, good contacts, you'll know that having seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rotary switches with 10 positions each is going to cost an absolute fortune. You might as well just buy one of those old resistor box, decade boxes and uh, clean up the contacts. Those are usually pretty good. I wanted something simpler and I decided to go for the dip switch version. And I can't remember who it was, but I know somebody else on the web did this. And what you do is instead of having a rotary switch, you select the respective resistor on each range. And the ranges, as you can probably see, are one to one to nine meg, 100 to 900K, 10 to 90K, and it starts at zero to nine ohms. Now this does have a zero, which means that you need 10 positions. The bottom position would be a straight short through. So that range is not used at all. Then it goes to the next one and so on. I'll be showing you the schematic on how that works. Now the idea is that I'll just be fitting this in here. Actually, it fits on this side and then the resistors go on the underside. And because of space constraints, the resistors will be vertical. I don't usually mount resistors vertical, but the alternative would be to use uh, surface mount. And I didn't want to do that. I decided to use through hole resistors. I wanted one watts, so they are pretty, pretty thick, but they will fit on here. And I'll be able to put all the resistors on this side and then I'll have the switching on this side, which means that my lowest resistance is on the right, the ohm range, the 10 ohm range, the 100 ohm range, the 1K range. So I'll be able to look at the resistance total that I put in sort of as I would look at a number. Least significant uh, digit to the most significant digit on the right. And the cat wants some attention, as you can hear. You'll have to wait. OK, let me get started on this. I'll show you quickly what the um, schematic looks like. I'm not even sure that I'm going to use this on one of those modules because I may just use this freestanding. Obviously, if I do use this freestanding, I've got to be careful with, you know, touching this thing because there will be no insulation and you can use a resistor in a high voltage part of a circuit. When I designed this, I made the contacts for the uh, banana um, sockets like this so that I could literally just put it through, push it through and tighten it on both sides. And I can have this thing just standing there. The other thing I'll need to do if I do this freestanding, I'll have to build or design some sort of little faceplate that goes on here because this thing starts at one. This would be like this. Doesn't matter which way around you put it, but it starts on one. And really, it's not going to be one ohm, two ohm, three ohm, four ohm, because the one is actually zero. You know, it's the short. So I'll have to make this uh, zero to nine rather than one to ten. But that's easily done. I can figure that out. But the point is, if you want eight ohms, you push the eight in and that will bring in all the resistors in series, eight of them. So you get eight ohms and here you'd get, say, 20 ohms, so you've got 28. You know, you know how this thing works. Let me show you very quickly what the um, schematic looks like, and then we'll do a build and do a test. I've got a problem. I only managed to get four of these guys. Living on Madeira sometimes supplies are a problem. I'm waiting for the remainder, so I'll only be able to build one, two, three, four. It doesn't matter. You can just keep adding them on. What I will do if I don't have these, when I show you this uh, video, I'll just short out that zero as well, so that as if this thing was in there selected to zero. But that's quite easy to do. I just want to evaluate whether this thing is worth it, whether the idea works, and whether the parasitic resistances of the switches don't really throw this off too much. Let's get going. Here's the full schematic. We've got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ranges. And let me show you how this thing is wired up. 
looking at this one range here, the first range, let's call this the 0 to 9 ohms. That means that all these resistors up here will be 1 ohm each. And I've chosen, uh, I believe it's 1% resistors, so that we get as accurate as possible. But they're all 1 ohm. Now imagine that you have, you don't want anything. So you put this on, this one here, 0, okay? 0 is on. If 0 is on, this is the path through there to there. All those resistors are going to end up in open contacts, so this signal goes straight to there and goes to the next range. Let's say you choose 5. So you've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You switch this one on, and suddenly this is going through here, through 5, and this goes through here, and suddenly your signal is over here. Now what happens when you go up here? It goes up, 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 up to here, and the return path is through these resistors, right? There's 1, 2, three, four, five, and of course it then goes on to the next one. So you've now got five ohms in this line between on this range. Now if you get to this guy over here and you want, say, uh, this is now the 10 ohm range, 10 ohm per step range, let's say you want 30 ohms, right? So you put it on the third one. Not this one, not this one, this is zero, one, two, three. That signal comes in here, goes through that switch, which is now closed, goes up here, meets that guy there, those are all 10 ohm resistors, so 10, 20, 30, and then it goes to the next one. It adds to the ones you have here, so you've got, what did I say, 35 ohms, and so on and so forth. It's as simple as that, it really is. So I haven't even put the values on these resistors because obviously I know that each range has um, the particular resistor for that range, but let me show you the, what the board looks like. Here is the board, simple as that, and we've got the, uh, the two sides, the side we're looking at right now, is, yeah, this will be the 0 to 9 ohms on this side, this will be 1 to 9 meg on this side, and as I mentioned, uh, I want the lowest bit, the least significant digit on this side, so this will be ohms, these will be tens of ohms, hundreds of ohms, uh, thousands of ohms, and so on, so that when I've got my resistor set, my value set, I can just read off left to right like you would a normal number, okay? That's all it is. So nothing to it, if this thing is correct, if this thing works well, I'll be sharing these uh, the Gerbers for this on PCBWay's website, so you can go ahead and do it yourself and hope it becomes useful. I've already mentioned this a few times, but when I do projects like this, they've got to be useful or they are not done. I, I normally use this uh, sponsorship from PCBWay to design objects and, and devices that I need for my hobby, and this is just another one of them. All right, let me start building this thing and see what, uh, what results. That was pretty easy. I've got the 0 to 9 facing me. This is going to be facing me. The resistors all at the back. These are all 1 ohm resistors. And as you can see, I decided to do them vertically. And it is a tight fit. These are 1 watt resistors. If they were 2 watts, they wouldn't have fit here. But it was planned this way, and it worked. And it's um, actually quite easy to solder. You've got to do this one step at a time. In other words, do those resistors, do that switch, and then you do these resistors and the next switch. Otherwise, you're going to have problems getting your soldering iron in there to solder the, um, the actual dip switch. But it's looking good so far. So what I'm going to do, I won't bore you with, um, with some of these rather mundane tasks. I'm going to solder the other bands. One, two, three. I've got th four of these switches. These last ones, I'll just short out the, the zero so we can uh, get this thing to work across there. And that's it. We'll see how this goes, because this thing is going to be 0 to 9 ohms, 10 ohms will be there, 10 to 90 ohms, 100 ohms will be there. So we'll be able to test 9.999K. Good. Next time you see this, it should be ready for testing. Let me get cracking. And here's the result, folks. The result of a lot of soldering. <laughs> this is a lot of soldering, and I haven't even finished it. I've shorted those three at the top across the zero point, so they will present zero resistance to add to whatever we add on here. When I get these switches, I'll finish that. If we look at the back, all the resistors line up nicely. These are 1 watts, and they fit. They fit tightly, but they fit well. And as I mentioned, you've got to be careful how you solder this. Solder a row of resistors, put in the switch, solder in the switch, then the other row of resistors, because you can imagine trying to get down there to solder the uh, those switch contacts. It's going to be tough. So this is tight, and the reason it's tight is because when I designed it, 
I was designing it to fit on one of those modules under my bench and it had size constraints. So let's test this thing. Now at the moment I've got everything off. Everything is off, so we should have infinite resistance. And indeed we see that on the meter over here. Now if I start putting the zero across, I'm going to switch all the zeros on. We should have zero resistance. But we've got a little bit of resistance. I've got a couple of leads here going to the multimeter leads. I've got these sockets. I've got a um, crocodile clip to the multimeter leads. So that's not bad actually. But what I can do is I can actually just reference zero. Zero that out, okay? And now what I need to do, whenever I want to put a resistance value, I take one away and put the other one back. So if I want to put five ohms, I take away the zero. Then it's one, two, three, four, five. That's not bad. Five ohms. If I want to put 50 ohms on here to get 55, I put take away the zero. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 55. 54.93. Let's try another 5 on here. So that should be 555 ohms, and we've got 555 and a half ohms, or 0.4 ohms. That's not bad at all. Now let's go to the K. We should be reading 5.555, and we're not, because 1% of 5K is starting to affect the end there. So that doesn't surprise me, but if I go to 7k, 7.55, and we're a few ohms out there, you could go and use 0.1% resistors here. Personally, this is not for use in lab work, so it would be overkill for me, but you can go crazy. You can go crazy with these resistors, make them as accurate as you can afford. They get pretty expensive as you go higher in accuracy. And let's see, if I take that away and put a 2 there, 7.2, 7.20, say, okay. Seven point two K. I don't even know what percentage that is, but it's not much. But this thing's working very well. Let's try one point two K. One thousand two hundred ohms. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. And it looks like this thing works the way I intended it. Is it cumbersome? Well, to be honest, it's not as simple as a um, as a rotary switch would be, but this whole thing probably costs less than one rotary switch. So I'm pretty happy. That's supposed to be 1.400, so 1.4K. Not bad. Not bad at all. And how much power can this thing handle? Well, these are 1 watt resistors. Now remember, if I'm using this on the lower range, so if I'm using, let's say I want to, uh, I put this on 0001. One ohm. Actually, that would be one ohm. It's not so good with your fingers. One ohm. That has got one one watt, one by one watt resistor in line here. So that's the maximum power it can take. But if I put it to two ohms and I pass one watt through, that power is being divided by two resistors. So this is actually capable of taking two watts. And if I do it on three, that would be able to handle 3 watts because the resistors are the same value and the power would divide accordingly. So this thing is a minimum of 1 watt. And only in a case where you've got only one resistor in a particular range working, that would be a minimum of 1 watt. And a maximum, well, it depends how the conf this thing is configured. So it can go up quite high. The point is, this thing is working exactly the way I wanted it to work. As I was doing this, I thought of what to do with this thing. I'm probably not going to put this on one of my modules because I think this thing will be a lot more useful just, you know, on my bench. Probably have another few of these. I'm not sure whether I'll need them, but if I do, it's easy enough to build another one. I don't even need to use such high, high uh, power resistors. I can put quarter watts or 600 milliwatts. They're very, very small and they're very cheap. So if I decide that I need more of these, I can build more of these and 
put a couple of spaces and they'll just sit on my desk next to the project I'm working on. So I'm happy with the result. And therefore I'm going to, I'm going to post this in the share section of the PCBWay website. I'll put the link to those boards in the description below. So if you want to use them, if you want to have some built up, go to the uh, link below, order directly from there, or you can download the Gerbers and do it any which way you want. So that's it for now. I want to thank you for your company. I want to thank PCBWay for the sponsorship of the boards and the video. If you enjoyed the video, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon and on PayPal. Links on the description below. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.